Welcome everyone. Here's another review of an interesting and probably difficult to obtain uh, really nice castle that costs about $50 including everything. Now this is called the Chateau Noir, or the Castle Black. And this is from the famous uh, French manufacturer of uh, figures, Starlux. And they've been making figures since 1950. Uh, and they've made hundreds and hundreds, uh, I say, I say thousands of figures. And they're well known for their Napoleonic figures. And they make a, as he said, a fantastic variety of figures. And uh, we'll be seeing a, um, a selection of their kind of figures from this kit in terms of what they offer. Because this kit, now let's see, we'll show you here. Made in Europe, designed in France. So somebody has brought this company back. Uh, apparently, it went out of business in the early 2000s, but uh, this was purchased just a few months ago off of Amazon. So it should be available somewhere, maybe in your country or not. Uh, it's hard to say. This may be only Eurocentric. Um, so you can see the really beautiful artwork you have here to start with. Again, this is something toy companies seem to be doing very well at which is producing um, really good photography. And this is the actual product. And it comes with a dragon. It's always cool, even though I'm always shocked that the dragons they give you seem to be so tiny. But we'll see that compared to the figures. So, um, very, very interesting. So this is a rare thing to look at to begin with. It comes in this nice uh, box that has a handle on the top can we see that yeah there we go and let's turn it around one other they've done a few nice things here in terms of packaging of course um the black castle here's just the side of the box this is such a big box that it's really hard to keep in frame so i'm not gonna even try that i'm not sure you need that uh anyway here's some more of that great uh box art and what they've done is actually using the boxes i think is a great idea which oftentimes is just uh thrown away um you cut these panels out and you use them as the floor inside of the castle i think that's a great idea it's a great way to use everything the other thing is that their instructions are on the box well how cool is that again here's stuff that you cut out you can see how these panels that are up top here are used here inside the castle and this is good cardboard and again it's very well printed so this makes an extended floor as you can see uh, pretty much here and here and it shows you how it clips in so the instructions are very good uh, here's other aspects this is um, banners or flags this, I believe this is used as a flag you bend it over You can show it there. I don't know if that's a flag or what exactly that is, some sort of sign. And of course, this is another area that shows you how to cut and fold. And there it says made in Europe again over here. So you cut it right out of the box, and we'll show you here right now as we open this up a little as we open this up oops that I can take the handle out here get a better view of this so you take the handle out here twist it a little so that we can uh, get it out of here properly there we go. there we go so you pull that out couldn't quite see that but okay now we're gonna open the box and um, what's kind of cool here is this is where your assembly instructions are instead of wasting paper and putting something that just about is thrown away also that usually isn't black and white they show you how to build the castle in full color 
right on the box. I think that's a great idea. I don't remember seeing this anywhere else. They show you how to connect um, the sides of the castle, how they fit together. This is four pieces. Then they show you how each piece clips into each other. Okay, here's the actual one of the doors, how it clicks in. Here's how one of the stands you put on there. Here's the drawbridge. And of course, we start over here again. What they have, which is cool with this, is the uh, which seems to be followed through many sets now, is they have this kind of fake fire. And it has uh, some uh, excellent stickers on it. Here's the drawbridge and how you put it through with a piece of string. It shows the whole step of how to put the drawbridge together there, which is kind of nice. shows you how to put in the one of the actual there's the drawbridge itself and there's the assembled castle of what it looks like with all the fire coming out of it so it's quite nice um i like that i like that touch i like to see it in full color and i don't really need i mean Manufacturers should be aware of waste in general. I've always hated waste. Here's the figures that come with it, and we'll open these up. See quite a few. They're painted, which is a nice little touch. Here is the string for the um, drawbridge. And this is a four-piece castle. Okay, here's all the simulated fire stuff. And let's see if I can pull back and out. This the simulated fire stuff and doors and ladders and all sorts of things that go with that. So this comes with it, which is kind of uh, all the way back. Yeah, that's all the way back. Uh, so you can actually see these. Well, it's nice. It gives you that, as you said, that fire look is something that's a kind of new now and exciting. Let's pull the pieces out. There's four pieces to the castle. And then we'll... Um, Here is the dragon, which is a blue dragon. And here's the rest of what's in the box. As I said, this is a big box, so it's hard. They do have some, some stickers, which I'm not a big fan of stickers in general. But these are very nice, and I'm going to use these. They're very detailed. They're, um, it's like these have been drawn for adults, not crude little things, particularly that you get with uh, Playmobil. Uh, which don't put any uh, fineness in their products like nobody cares. I'm not even sure even if a kid had it, the, it would be nice to have that. And here's all the fire, and this looks pretty good, so I'm probably going to use those. Here's the other string for the drawbridge, because it uses two. Okay. Let's just put the actual castle up here. Now, this is a pretty nice castle for uh, with kind of a whole play set is what you're getting here and you're getting it for what would be approximately fifty dollars us um and you have the front and the back of the castle which is this piece the only unfortunate thing is that um you know the front and back of castles are not the same the front uh the back of a castle generally doesn't have an opening um per se so you've got to save money, they duplicated the same piece. And of course, the same thing for the sides of the castle. And I guess those can be the same. Of course, they have a lot of entrances here and everything else. But of course, that makes play better. If everything is um, walled up to this level, uh, well, you can't really have much of a battle or have some interesting. So I can see the point in doing that. Um, and maybe the same with the back uh, to a degree because of the fact that, you know, if everything is sealed up, it's not going to be much fun. So let's take a look at these again. And um, let's see how that, those just fit in. If I remember correctly, it's kind of pressed together. Yeah, that just presses together. And um, so these sides go into the front, obviously, or... 
the back. Let me look at this. Yeah, there are clips down below, so this stays in. There we go. You can hear that's always the sound of success, is generally when things click in. So they've clicked in there, and we're going to do the same thing here. So it's pretty easy assembly here, which again, I hate assembling anything. Um, I just want to get to it. The less assembly for me, the better. I don't like Legos. Uh, even um, Playmobil gets to be a little too much assembly for my liking. I like to get things as complete as possible. There you go, the click. And that was in the top there. I like to get things assembled uh, as quickly as possible. This certainly is going very fast. And of course then, the little things aren't too bad unless they're tedious. And of course, uh, we'll show you here how these fit right in here and you'll hear that click again. Let's try and get that down. So it's hard to get the camera inside. And these fit in like this. Now for full impact uh, war gaming, which is what I'm getting into here in uh, designing kind of a whole new system of gameplay. This certainly is a beautiful castle. This is great for a kid. You know, when I was growing up, it was very difficult to find any knight stuff, believe it or not, which seems to be very popular now. But you really couldn't find knights. There was uh, mostly... Uh, western type sets and it was rare to find anything and you generally have to find it from sort of European sources to find castles. Now there are many many castles that you can purchase online um, from very cheap ones 15 to 25 dollars with little figures from China to um, all the way up to several hundred dollars of getting some cool plastic castles of different types. So it just depends what you like and what you want to do with them. Um, but this for an actual play set, and you can see here it's got some nice uh, places to put figures here. Good spaces. And this is very rugged plastic. You know, this is it's going to be very difficult. Even if you fell on this as a kid or even as an adult, it would be difficult to break this from what I can see. It's very, very strong. This is um, not hard plastic, but it's hard-ish, and it's going to, um, it doesn't bend real flexible, so you're not going to run into that problem. So that's quite nice, uh, that whole setup there. And let's get back to the pieces and so forth. So this is kind of the front. And here's all the stickers, and you can see we'll put those on, at least most of them. We'll see how it goes. Let's take a look at the actual figures. So let's take this out of the way because it's a little disruptive, and look at the figures themselves here so we can get a pretty good look at it. Well, let's, let's uh, I showed you the stickers already, but let's uh, cut open the package with the dragon. And everybody loves dragons, and I'm a big collector of dragons now. Um, And, you know, they've been making figures since uh, for over 50 years now. And uh, as I said, I'm not sure if they're still in business, but they were well known for making quality figures. Now, I bought figures from these people many, many years ago, uh, about 30 years ago in the uh, USA from a special importer uh, because they had very nice Viking figures, which I was collecting at the time. Now, this is soft plastic. Let's take a look at the detail of it. Because, you know, that's what everybody... People want things that look good, that are not crude. And this is certainly nice. It's got good detail to it. It looks like all you have to do, and that's my kind of assembly, is you just press this in the top to keep the wings on. Do I have that in the right direction? I'm not sure. It looks like it's this way. And it rests on its tail there and seems to stand up pretty well. So that's a nice little dragon that they just kind of threw in. So you can't you can't beat that to make it a little more attractive. Again, I think it's kind of small. You know, a lot of times they give you small dragons, and I don't quite understand that because uh, compared to a human, it, they're too small. So I don't know what that is. It does seem to be an afterthought to a degree with some of these things, but. Um, 
I mean, this company ought to know they've been making figures for a long time, mostly Napoleonic figures. Since this is a French company, it made an awful lot of Napoleonic figures. Well, um, well, that's kind of a nice thing there. Look at that. Well, since I just saw that. And again, these are well made. They're not chintzy. This is a, um, a catapult here. And we can take the actual... But it's not thin. You know, a lot of things, particularly what you get from China, are very thin. And as such, they tend to um, uh, break very easily. They don't hold their shape. They look really bad. Um, uh, so forth. So, oops. Probably should have left that on there. It looks like I just cut the... Uh, Looks like I just cut the rubber band that was supposed to stay on there. That wasn't supposed to come off. But it's a, um, and it kind of locks in here. So that's kind of nice. Um, but it's well made. As you said, it's rugged. Is there any rubber bands here? So note that for yourself, that rubber band, which looks like a very much of a, um, something that is used for storage uh, or shipping. Uh, should stay on there apparently. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out how this goes back on there. And um, looks like the rubber band. You could do this. Yeah, that works great. That way you can adjust your rubber band as well. I'm not sure that that was a packing, but we'll see in a minute. But what's nice is that this goes down here and actually gives you a holder which is quite nice because then you can position things without two movements and then release it and that has some very good force here they also give you um and i guess that's the way it works with these because they are so you're meant to put it on loosely like this and then of course we'll see here and that gives you you can see a very good throw now, the problem with that is, is that um, with these little balls, uh, you're going to have problems losing them, etc. Uh, but that's all part of catapulting. You have to be very careful where your actual balls that you're shooting at them actually go. So, so that's really nice. It's well made. Look at the wheels. It's the, and it's put together. You don't have to assemble any of this stuff. Uh, this all I like. The detail is pretty good. It, as you said, it has that nice feature where you have that on there. And of course, you can throw anything you desire depending on what you're using it for. They do give you three of those. And it looks like that other one already shot out somewhere. I'm going to have to hunt up. Well, if you're into figures, and generally I use my own figures when I get sets like this. I bought this particularly for the castle itself. And... Um, but let's look at the figures we have here. They have uh, horse uh, figures that go on horses. And what's nice here is apparently they have holes in the top here where you can actually stick uh, the figure into. Because that's always a problem with figures is they tend to fall off. This doesn't. So there's a lot of nice little features here that you don't see anywhere else. Um, And they seem to stand fairly well. And you've got, uh, okay, you've got one horse that is rising up out of the four here, which is kind of nice. And we can put that um, let's see here, you gotta make sure you get it in. There is a hole there. See that hole? And of course, there is this sticking out of the bottom there, so that's nice. But you know, like everything else, you got to make sure you get it aligned properly. There we go. So that's kind of nice. Um, there's the other. Now, what's nice about their figures as well is that they um, 
they are fairly well detailed, but not super detailed, but um, they do paint them. So you've got this paint on here. You've got the silver painted, the sword is painted, the helmet is painted, and the shield. That's kind of a nice touch. Usually everything, they don't bother with that. So that's another nice touch, and they all have uh, painted on them, so it gives that extra. Generally, you don't see that hardly in any figures. Um, what they do is, uh, as I said, they're just plain. So that's kind of nice. Um, here's the other figures. You've got a thrusting a figure. These are both horse figures, which, as I said, have that feature of, of the bottom there. And again, these are, you know, you've got the silver and the um, adversaries are the blue. And um, let's get in there and show you these. So the painting job isn't the greatest, but it's nice for what you're dealing with here. And the details on the figures are pretty good. I mean, you're not going to get much different uh, details on this size figure. I don't know if this is 35 millimeter or whatever it is. I always have those things confused here. They're about two inches, about two inches. So they do try and give it a little face. Um, the armor, the shield. And of course, when the when the colors are black like this, they do uh, the weapons. So that's kind of nice. I think that's a nice little touch from this uh, company who makes very fine figures in general. And you can still find a lot of these on uh, eBay and other places where they're still selling these figures. And they're going for, you know, individual figures. Um, <clears throat> a special people are going anywhere from $35 to $70 for a uh, hard plastic figures, so you're talking about people value these, and um, uh, it's amazing how we don't see more stuff from France and other places. We tend to see things from England, but it's amazing how you don't see much of that, and of course there are uh, German figures as well uh, that you see out there, but um, certainly Star Lux, S-T-A-R-L-U-X, um, certainly... Um, is well known and has these kind of quality for pretty low prices in general. Uh, it depends on uh, what you're getting. So they also make many different types of toys, not just night themed. Uh, they have garages, gas stations, kind of playmobil -y type stuff as well. And of course, uh, at least that are made in kits right now. So these are... Um, these are probably not made in France, I'm not sure, but they are designed there. It says uh, made in the EU. They may, be, they may have came back with their molds or somebody bought their molds in some other country where they're produced. But um, most of the time, it's difficult to find out where things are made from in uh, Europe because it doesn't uh, tell you uh, anything more than made in the EU. Okay. I think we've got some good, um, we've got some good actual um, footage here of the figures. Let's push them off to the side and let's look at the dragon again. Let's get in close on that and see if we can get some more detail. You can see how well it's made. So it's a good little figure to include in a set like this. Now let's have a final look at the now I've put a big rubber band on it, but um, so this is well made and it's got some force behind it. It has that real nice 
a locking feature, which you rarely see. And I think that's a great idea because it allows you to uh, really aim well. And you can lock it in, line it up nice and straight there, and then you can move it around with aiming without having to pull it back or holding it back, uh, which can be difficult at times. Um, so that's really nice. Everything is well made, well put together. So far, so good. The castle looks very good as well. Okay, I'll put this Let's get back to the castle itself and see what we want to put on here. Now, we have the strings for the drawbridge. I'm not sure I'm going to use that. you got to remember, this is for um, full impact war gaming, which is shooting uh, at these things using statistical data as well, like you do in traditional war gaming, but it's really boring. You're just rolling dice and pushing things. We like to involve the effort of actually shooting at it, like there'd be real combat. And these are skills that develop in you um, eye-hand coordination. Um, a lot of this is really excellent for you uh, shooters out there because of the fact it's going to develop shooting skills where you can't normally go and shoot everywhere or have a range near you that... Um, this will develop your firearm skills. As usual, I don't like these things. You never get them in to fit right. Um, but these are nice. They're sophisticated. They're very well drawn. They have a lot of detail. Let's show you that again. See all the detail on there? So this really dresses the castle up. Now, the one thing we avoid is anything that's kind of hanging outside. Now, Playmobil does a lot of that with torches and other things um, to add to their... But that's very bad for wargaming because of the fact that uh, these things, if hit, will fly off and can become uh, dangerous with full-impact wargaming. Now, I'm going to um, discuss that when we get into the rules, but we're just going to put this together. Uh, there's all those cool fire effects. Let's look at those again. Here's the, that's a huge piece, so it's hard to get, there we go. Now these are doors, platforms. I'm not sure what those are for, but we'll find out. Ladders, barriers, and here's the fake kind of fire. There's a ladder, and you get two of these, um, I think they're both the same, yeah. You get two of these that are exactly the same because they fit on both sides of the actual castle, which are identical. So let's get back into this and see what goes where. Um, you know, look at those instructions again. So you've got... Um, the doors themselves... Where's the round door? Here we go. The round door itself, which is this. A lot of times it's better instead of pulling them off, which is so typical, uh, it's better to actually cut them off using scissors or knives or other things. That way you don't get these little plastic bumps as well. Um... So here's your basic um, door, which goes on the sides. And they just press in. Should be very simple here. There's two little prongs there. You press them in and then they can close. Of course, having doors in the bottom of your castle is not really a good idea because that's how people get in. But. Uh, um, for the sake of uh, wargaming, even full contact uh, wargaming, um, this is good because there's uh, lots of extra places to try and get into, etc. Because you want to make it interesting. Um, there are other castles, of course, that don't have any of that, and you can certainly um, get castles like that. But, you know, they're all different in terms of their makeup. When you start getting castles... And I'll have reviews of many. Um, you're going to start um, seeing all the little differences that uh, you get there. So, um, 
Okay, there's the other door. Oh, okay, that one doesn't have it. That goes on the other side. That is more of a drop door. So they have lots of openings, as I said, which are basically good for um, battle strategies. This has like a drop door, which we're going to get to here in a minute. Okay, I've got the, um, this is kind of a drop door and you can see the top here. Let me move over here. You can see the top here is, um, they show actually a horse going through here. This is something that, uh, again, is very unsecure for a castle, uh, but it will enhance uh, your wargaming um, reality there. Let me see how these fit in here, and then they clip like that. And then, of course, this flips up, and you can see how it meets the top here. So, of course, you would never have that as a... That's why you only have one entrance. If you have multiple entrances, it means that you can't fortify them well, etc. But, as you said, this is very good for uh, war gaming in general. I'll stick it in there and then there, and then make sure it locks in. This is a little, a little shaky. But again, when you're shooting at things, that may be good. But you're not going to push that in. Okay, so we have those two on there. And um, we're going to look what goes next here, which is the actual drawbridge is what they're showing, which is the large piece. And of course, there's two of everything because you have the same size on everything. So, um, get those pieces out. Now we're gonna put the drawbridge on. I'm not gonna use the actual, um, they do give you string here to use that you stick through these holes, but I'm not gonna do that. Um, yeah, I think it makes it look cheap. Now, the drawbridge, you got to cut the, you know, I cut everything out now using my knifey here. Um, be careful not to cut these off, obviously. That's what holds it in. And these just go in the front here. It doesn't feel it. Let me see if I can get that to you. I think there's a front and a back on here. Let's see how that goes in there. Okay, you got to push it in a little. You can feel it go in when you do it right. And then you're going to do the same thing on this side, kind of pull back on it. And that way it locks in there pretty good. Of course, those are things that are wear points. So do be careful of that because that will break uh, over time. And, of course, you could put the string through this if you want. I think, again, that makes things look chintzy, kind of goofy with a big string on there. And, of course, you get the, uh, this is the side that didn't have the stickers on. But I think I'm going to use these stickers. I kind of think they look cool and dress the castle up. And, of course, you know, you can paint over these castles, make them look more rustic uh, by... Um, putting black paint and rubbing it over there, giving it a certain finish. I'm not going to do that right now. So these are pretty nice stickers. Didn't quite get those, but that's the way stickers go. But I think that makes the castle look good. They also have a, the same castle in a sand color for some reason, uh, which is interesting. Um, let's go put the other drawbridge on the other side.
so again, I'm kind of cutting this stuff off here. And you have to, as I said, be careful. And you want to make sure you don't cut too much. You should have a good sharp knife so you don't have to put too much pressure here. Okay. And again, these are all little tricks that I'm saving you a lot of time uh, struggling with because I'm doing it. So you put this in the hole here and you push it. You should feel it. Yeah, it didn't do too well there. You should feel it. Looks like there's some sort of... I didn't cut that well. There's a little bit left on there. So you want to push it in. You can see you can actually hear that click. As you said, in most model assembly, when you hear that click, that is a sign that it's went in properly. You get that kind of... There's something in trouble with this one a little bit because it's too much when you push it. Okay. Be careful because if you break those at the bottom, then it's not going to work. Let me take a look at this again. Looks like this is... Now you got to push this out enough too because if these are too close together, you're not going to have enough. And you do have to push them in or they're not going to work right. So, And you can feel that. And here we go again. Now you want to push it carefully. There, oh, too much again. So for some reason that wants to go far. And these are all the things you get with assembling things. And of course, this is not really expensive. So uh, all these little fits, I'm assuming, are part of getting something that's not quite as uh, fitted or expensive as other things. And of course, the drawbridges are a critical area depending on what you're doing. So... Um, I'm going to do this a little different here. I'm going to expand it in using a knife like this. Okay. Oops. You can see how that kind of pops out. So this is going to be one of the little problems with this. So you have to just get it right like I did there uh, by hand. And you've got that drawbridge. But having two attack areas, uh, if you're looking for wargaming fun, and it's a real nice castle. I like it, and it's very sturdy. Very sturdy cow. I mean, it's good, hard plastic. That's not going to break if kids throw it around if you're buying it for kids. And it's going to be good for wargaming as well in that aspect. Because it's not going to be something that breaks up too easy. Um, let's get over here. Now, we've done that. We've put those two in. Now we're getting the platforms. Here's the platforms uh, that um, you have grates that fit on. And that's these. Okay. Let's push this back and kind of get down so we can see what we're doing here. This is the next figure, and there goes, there is a. Great of sorts that go on here. Which look like this. Which are nice little touches. I mean, these are nice little touches. This then goes in here. And like all these little arrow things, they're initially a little bit difficult to get in there. You gotta bend and prod. You don't wanna break those pegs again. But then it fits in, or kind of fits in. I didn't get that in fully, apparently. No, that one side is, uh, or is it both sides? Okay, you gotta get it and then yeah, I can see with this set, it's very... You have to get it kind of perfect. There we go. And that kind of opens, which is kind of cool. Not sure why you'd want that to open, but uh, that gives you... But that's a platform that the soldiers actually stand on. I'm going to show you where that goes. Um...
as well. So this is where they stand on and they go in the top here. And you can see they kind of click in there. Um, and they're supposed to push through because that gets you kind of those battle armaments. Let's try that again. 